Hi guys, I wanted to describe to you how make files work. Um, I'm just gonna make a I'm just gonna make an empty directory here. Let's call it scratch, because I want to start from scratch. So it's just completely empty. I want to add a couple of source files, let's say foo.c and main.c. And the notion is that uh, main.c is just gonna uh, call a function defined in uh, foo.c. So I need stio.h so I can have some output. I'm going to include foo.h since I'm calling a function that requires a prototype and I'm going to put the prototype in a single place, foo.h. Um, the main program is just going to be quite simple. It'll say printf foo.3 foo of 3 the function foo evaluated with three as its argument is equal to something, and we'll call food three. Foo is going to be an integer function that returns, accepts an integer and returns an integer. Very simple. The main program I'll just have return zero. Let's go ahead and define foo. Um, we'll include foo.h. We will uh, define foo is a function that requires a single integer argument, and it's going to return 3 times x plus 4. Okay, I'm just made, totally made that up. Um, let's grab that definition and define foo.h to simply be a prototype of that definition. Okay, so if I look in my scratch directory, I've got three files, foo.c, foo.h, main.c. Um, and if I just cat them all out, you can see that they're exactly what we defined. Okay, so uh, I could of course build the program with a single G invocation of GCC. I'm going to say, uh, give me all warnings. I'm going to say uh, compile uh, main.c, foo.c, and let's uh, make the output be main. So I can compile that. There are no warnings uh, because it's such a simple function, such a simple program. Now when I run foo, it says foo of 3 is 13. Let's see, that's 9 plus 4. Yeah, that makes sense. So that worked. Um, now, so why do we even bother with a makefile? We could just use this approach at all times. The issue is that uh, as programs get more complicated, we end up with many, many more files. They're interconnected in complicated ways. And when we make a change in one file, we don't want to have to compile everything in order to rebuild the program, because uh, builds get expensive and long. And so it makes sense to only compile the files that are affected by that change. And a make file is a way to specify what depends on what in a way that the make program can automatically perform the right steps in order to uh, build only what's needed and build what's needed uh, that, that, that changed. So that's the idea. So let's uh, create a make file to do this. Oh, before I create the make file, let's also do one other thing. I compiled the program in one step. You could also compile it in two steps. You could compile the C programs into object files and then link the object files to create the executable. Let's see how that works. I could say, notice right now, I've only got the source files and the executable. So we'll get rid of the executable, and let's make object files instead. So I'd say GCC, I add the dash C argument. That means um, I want to only compile. I'll create an output file, foo.o, from the source file, foo.c. So this means compile the source file, foo.c, do not link it, that's what the dash C means, and the output object file, put it in foo.o. And then we can do the same thing for main. And now you'll notice I've got a foo.o and a main.o. Now I can invoke GCC again and say put the output in main of the linkage of foo.o and main.o. And now main still executes as it did before, but now I've broken the, com the compiling and the linking into two separate steps, two compile steps and one link step. So let's make a make file that does that. Um, okay, there is no make file, so we're starting from scratch, right? 
So one way to do this would be to simply say uh, main is my output, and it depends on foo.o and main.o. So the thing that, that goes on the left of the colon is the target. The thing that goes on the right are the dependencies, right? And what I want to do is to put in the recipe to convert from the dependencies to the target. In that case, that's GCC uh, warn all, and then I want to say the output is main, and the inputs are foo.o and main.o, just like that. So I realized after I recorded this that there was one point that I forgot to make, which is that the first character of the recipe line, not the target and the dependency line with the colon, but the other line that's the recipe, needs to be a tab character. The very first character must always be a tab character. You can see that in my make file, but it's not explicit. So just FYI, make sure the first character in every recipe is always a tab. Okay, the other thing I'd like to do is to put in a recipe to create foo.o and main.o. So foo.o, uh, it depends on foo.c and foo.h. And to build foo.o, I want to say uh, the output is foo.o and I'm going to compile foo.c, but I only want to compile, so I'm going to add dash c. And then I need the same recipe for main. Make sense? So I'm um, compiling foo.c, main.c, uh, to create foo.o and main.o, and to make main, I'm linking foo.o and main.o to create main. So if I say, let's see what we got here now. Um, I'd like to add one more target. It, it, rather than re deleting main.o, foo.o, and main all the time, um, let's add another target called clean. And its job is simply to remove all the .o files and main. And uh, I want to say dash f because if those files aren't there, I don't want it to report an error. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to delete the Emacs uh, backups as well. So when I say make clean, I mean it. I uh, just want to be back to the source files. So if I now type make, notice it knows to execute all three steps. It links uh, foo.o and main.o to create the main executable, and it compiles foo.o and main.o from the original sources. If I touch foo.h and I type make, it rebuilds everything because everything depends on foo.h. But if I touch foo.c and rebuild, then it only recompiles foo.c and then relinks. It doesn't recompile main.o because main program didn't change. Does that make sense? I'll, furthermore, if, I'm, if I touch foo.o, and rebuild, it just links. It doesn't compile because the C file didn't change. Uh, so make understands to look at the timestamps of files to figure out what to actually do to create an updated executable. Okay, um, now before I finish, let me just point out that um, this is not much better than doing it manually except for the dependency management, because I had to write a separate recipe for every single object file. It turns out there's a way to uh, generify, I guess you could say, um, the process by using wildcards. So if I say %o and %c here, it means that to create any object from any C, this is the recipe you're supposed to use. And uh, the only trick is I don't want to I want to say not foo.o, but whatever .o it was that it found. And so the way you spell that is dollars at sign. And it depends on the first thing on the right of the colon, which is uh, dollars left angle bracket. So I can then get rid of this one. This is a generic form. It handles any uh, C file that needs to be converted to a .o. Um, you can do that with a recipe like that. So let's go ahead and make clean, and then make, and notice that I got my GCC. Um, it 
automatically built the foo.o and the main.o and then created the executable. There's lots of other uh, mechanisms. Uh, one, one is sometimes you want to say, uh, oh, I want to say something like objects equals foo.o and main.o. And then here, instead of, instead of, um, Instead of spelling out the objects twice, I can just define them once and then uh, put them as the dependencies and also put them in the recipe. Um, and you can see that that now works as well. So there's lots of little tricks like that to, to make the thing a little bit more efficient. But um, the main idea is that you've got targets, you've got dependencies, and um, when the dependencies are modified, the targets get rebuilt. That's, that's the basic idea.